Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to Practical Program Channel. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with Web GPU graphics programming. In the last few videos, I explained how to create some simple graphics and primitives. In fact, all of these graphics objects are flat and two-dimensional. We have not created any real 3D graphics yet. In this video, I will explain how to create a 3D cube with a distinct face color. This is the first real 3D object we are going to create in a web GPU applications. This example involves a lot of code and mathematics, so please get ready to digest it. In order to create real 3D object in Web GPU, you need to have the mathematical background of 3D matrix and 3D transformations. Since our computer screen is two-dimensional, it cannot directly display 3D objects. To view 3D objects on a 2D screen, you have to project your object from 3D to 2D. That will involve a series of coordinate transformations. From here, you can see that we define our 3D object in object coordinate system. We then perform various transformations on the object, including scaling, translation, and rotation. We call this transformation as a model transform. After this transformation, we convert the object in the object coordinates into the object in the world space. Next, the view transform locates the viewer in the world space and transforms our 3D object onto camera coordinates. The camera coordinates sometimes are also called eye coordinates. The purpose of projection transform is to define view volume called the view fraston. This is used in two ways. The fraston determines how the object is projected onto the screen. It also defines which portion of the object are clipped out of the final image. Uh, that is, only the portion of object inside this fraston will be kept, and anything outside this fraston will be clipped out. Finally, we use the viewport transform to convert the clip coordinates into the normalized device coordinate. That will actually be used to draw the object on your computer screen. In WebGPU, the viewport transform is automatically performed in the vertex seeder code. Uh, please note that like WebGL, the WebGPU API does not provide any function for working with transformations. In this video series, I will use a JavaScript package called GL Matrix to create 3D matrix operations and 3D transformations in WebGPU applications. Since matrix and transformations are common for any computer graphics programming, here I suppose you already have the mathematical background on graphics programming. I will not spend any more time on this. Instead, I will concentrate on how to create 3D objects in web GPU applications. If you really need to refresh the math background on 3D transformation, you can take a look at my recently published book, Practical Web GPU Graphics and I read through the chapter 5, the 3D transformations, where I provide details how to construct a model, view, and a projection matrix, and how to perform coordinate transformations. Here is the content of chapter 5. You can order the book from Amazon or from my website here. In this video, I will show you how to create a 3D cube with distinct face colors. That is, a cube has six faces. Each face has a different color. 
from this example, you will learn some of the important concept in web GPU, that is, uniform buffer and bound group. We will use the uniform buffer to represent the transformation and projection matrices, and then use the bound group to pass the uniform buffers to the vertex seeder. Again, we will use the gate tool to clone the source code used in the last video. Here is the download link at the GitHub repository. From this link, you can download all the source code used in the last video. Now, open a command prompt window and run the following command. git clone and paste the link. This will generate a WebGPU09 folder on your local machine. This folder contains all the source code used in the last video. Now we want to change the name of WebGPU09 folder to GPU10. Rename WebGPU10 and CD into this new folder. At this point, we are going to start Visual Studio Code with the command code period. This is the Visual Studio Code interface. Okay, we can close this welcome page. Here contains all the source code used in the last video. Now open a new terminal window and use the npm install the command to restore the npm packages. This installation may take a while to finish, so please be patient. Okay, finished. Now all the installed packages are stored in the node modules folder. Now we need to install a new npm package called GL matrix with the following command npm install gl matrix. Uh, we will use this package to perform uh, matrix operations and 3D transformations. Now let's uh, make some change to the index.html file. From drst folder open index.html file First, we need to change the 9 to 10 because this is a 10th video series. And uh, also, we need to change the H1 title, face color. Here, we also keep the canvas element and with the ID equal to canvas web GPU. And also, we fix canvas size. Now, we can save this file. Here we are going to create a 3D cube. Uh, this is the coordinates of the cube. From this diagram, you can see there are eight vertices and six faces of this cube. If each face has a different color, each vertex, for example, the vertex C, will have three different colors. Here is the front face, A, B, C, D. As we did before for a square, now we can divide this front face into two triangles, ABC and triangle CDA. In the same way, you can perform triangularization for the other faces. Now let's back to Visual Studio Code. We need to add a new type script file called vertexdata.ts file to the SRC folder. SRC for the new file called vertex data.ts and we need to enter the following code. Here we separate the position and the color data for this cube. You can see here we duplicate many vertex data, same the vertex that we use many times. Uh, we have learned before the index buffer can avoid vertex data duplication. So I have a question for you. Why we cannot use the index buffer for this example? You can think about this question. Now we can save this file and close it. Next, we will make changes to the seeder code. 
open the seeder.ts file from this folder. Now we need to replace the content of this uh, file. You can see this uh, seeder is different from that we used previously because we need to incorporate the uniform buffer that stores the transformation and projection metrics. Here, we first define a uniform structure. This structure contains one element, MVP matrix. You can see the variable here is a uniform. This is different from the color and the position because it's in, in input and output. But here, this uniform types, this uniform represents transformation and uh, projection. Inside this main function, you can see we transform original position use MVP matrix. So we get a final output position. After this transformation, the other code is similar to that we used before, including V color here. And we pass this V color to the fragment seeder you can see the V color as an input. So we define output fragment color to the V color. This is the seeder we are going to use to create our 3D cube. Now save this file and uh, close it. Now open the helper.ts file. First, we uh, need to import from GL matrix. I need to introduce vector three mat four module. Now we need to add a new method called create view projection to this file. Add the code for this new method. The new method called create view projection. This method takes four parameters. One is respect ratio, camera position camera look at the direction and camera up direction. Here we first create view matrix, projection matrix, and a view projection matrix. We then call the metaphor perspective a method to create projection matrix and call the metaphor look at method to create a view matrix. We then multiply the view matrix and the projection matrix to create view projection matrix. Uh, next, we define the camera option. Uh, this related uh, camera position and look at the direction. This option will be used for the camera controls. This method returns view matrix, projection matrix, view projection matrix, and the camera option. Next, we need to add uh, another method called create transforms. Here is the code. You can see the method is called create transforms. Here, we first uh, create three rotation metrics, uh, ro rotating about the X, Y, and Z axis. We then create the translation and the scale metrics. Next, we perform individual transformation for the input argument. Finally, we combine use multiply methods to combine all these metrics together to form the final matrix we call model matrix. Now save this file and close it. Now we need uh, to make uh, some changes to the main.ts file. From this uh, src folder, open the main.ts file. Here we need to replace its content with the following code. Here we first introduce some methods from the helper.ts file. First the two methods, the old method we used before. These two create the transform, create view projection is a new method we just implemented in the helper.ts file. We also introduce seeder and cube data from vertex data file. And also we introduce the metal four module from GL matrix package. Inside the create 3D object method, the code is very similar to that we used in the previous example. Here you can see we create a vertex buffer 
and the color buffer is the same as before. Here, the render pipeline also very similar to that we used before, including the buffer attribute. The only difference here is we add a depth essential attribute here. In particular, we set a depth write enabled to true here. This means we enable the depth essential testing. The depth essential testing determine whether or not a given pixel should be drawn or not. For 3D graphics, enabling the depth essential testing is very important. Otherwise, you may get uh, unexpected graphics. I will discuss this uh, issue later. The following code is new and specific for our 3D cube. Here, we create the model and view and the projection matrices by calling the create view projection method. Uh, this method we just implemented in the hyper.ts file. From here, we create a view projection matrix. You can see view projection matrix from here. We then create a uniform buffer for our MVP matrix. You can see uniform buffer. The size is uh, 64 because the matrix is 4 by 4 with 16 elements. And each element is a 1432 number, so its size is 64 here. You can see the usage the flag also set uniform. When we create the vertex buffer, we set another attribute called mapped at the creation to true. But here, uh, we omit this attribute means we set mapped at creation to false by default. Uh, this means our uniform buffer is unmapped, so it can be manipulated by GPU directly. Next, we define the binding group for the uniform buffer. You can see we call create binding group. Here, the layout, we use the pipeline dot get binding group layout. Here we have interest is this is the array. In our example, we only have one uh, MVP matrix. So the binding we set zero. Resource we, here the buffer is the uniform buffer because we only have one data. So offset is zero and the size is 64. If we uh, have a more than one uniform buffers, you can put a more buffer into this uh, uh, entry array. Next, in addition to the text view from this swap chain, we also define the depth texture here. The size is the size of our canvas. You can see the canvas element width and height. The format is depth 24 plus. Of course, you can use other formats here. The usage flag we said render attachment here. Here is the render pass description contains two attachments. One is a color attachment, another is a depth stencil attachment. The depth stencil attachment is new for our cube. Next, we construct our model matrix use create transforms methods implemented in the hyper.ts file. We then obtain MVP matrix by combine model matrix and a view projection matrix so we get a mvp matrix next we add this mvp matrix to the uniform buffer to use this comment we add the mvp matrix to the uniform buffer you should already familiar with the following code we just define random path and set a vertex and the color buffer here you can see we set a uh, vertex buffer to the slot 0 and a color buffer to the slot 1. Another thing is new here, we also set binary group, use a uniform binary group we just defined before. Uniform binary group. So we set this uniform binary group to our render path. This uniform binary group is used to pass uniform buffer to the vertex seeder. Now we have finished the modification to the main.ts file. We can now save this file. 
up to now we have finished all the programming you can see this example is very involved now we can run the following command in the terminal window to bound our TypeScript code in the production mode npm run prod okay the bound file is created successfully you can see the main bundle.js file is about 57 kb is also very small now we can click the go live this link from this status bar to open the default Chrome canary to view our 3D cube. Okay, click this link. Okay, here is our 3D cube with different face color. From this angle, you can see three faces, blue, red, and gray. Uh, as I said before, the depth stencil attribute is important for creating 3D objects in WebGPU applications. Now, if we turn it off by setting the depth right enable to force, well, let's go back to the Visual Studio code. From here, the pipeline, we define here depth stencil. If we set this depth right enable to force, that is, we turn this depth stencil, the attribute off, then save this file, then rebound our code. So this is our results. This is the unexpected result. You can see the side of the cube are being drawn, but they overlap each other in a strange way. The reason is that when WebGPU draw the cube triangle by triangle, it is simply writes over pixel, even though something else may have been drawn before. In this case, WebGPU draw triangles in the back over triangle at the front. The depth stencil attribute tells when to draw over a pixel and when not to. So we need to go back to set it to true. Let's go back to set it to true here. We can also improve the performance of our code. Since our cube is solid piece of geometry, we can use the back curling to curl the non-visible faces. The face curling is a great way for improve code performance. So inside these primitives, we can set the curl mode back. So we curl out the back face. Now we save this file, rebound this code. Okay, this is give the cube with distinct face color again. Now we have a complete our example. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video. I will post the link for the source code below this video. You can click the link to download the source code. I will end this video here. In next video, I will show you how to animate our cube and how to use a mouse to interact with the cube. See you next time. Bye.